The Robbery by Nicholas Brown. This is a fictional short story that I hope you guys enjoy. If you're a fan of the show Atlanta, this might be your cup of tea. The Robbery. The storm clashed among the clouds the past two days along with Draymond's stomach. Though stressed because the jobs he applied for seemed not to like him, he plays with his daughter. She's just happy being alive, not one care if I'm rich or not. The child's mother later came to pick their daughter up. Be lucky I don't put your ass on child support. You trying my patience. It's been, what, six, seven months? The job market ain't that damn bad. I looked at every warehouse around here, and they got enough forklift and crane operators. It's slowing this part of the state. I got to wait, then save up to move where the work is. You know how this goes. You act like if I don't got it, then I won't give. Your child can't eat from the dollar menu all the time, Draymond, and I can't keep up all this on my own. Keep up what? Your hair and car note that you don't need? I need all this for work, something that you need to do, and soon. Draymond couldn't apply for every job like most folks. He served a full two-year sentence in prison for a burglary he did at 19. His family couldn't help much. His father was in jail, mother died from an overdose at age nine, and other family members left him alone after doing time. He sleeps in a friend's living room who works as a bartender at the hole in the wall where he met his baby mama. Draymond was just another dark brown, six foot tall statistical poster child of the struggle. Before things slowed down for him work-wise, he picked up seasonal gigs over the last three years since being released. The only thing giving him hope was an out-of-town opportunity, his older cousin with the hookup at the docks in Seattle. I'm way over in Spokane, Washington, and no one wants to front me money for a bus ticket claiming they're broke too. Not thinking straight due to lack of sleep and hunger pains, Draymond took his homeboy's gun and went pocket hunting. Pulling up at a stoplight, coming from the gym was Wyatt, a newly wedded black man with a child on the way. He graduated from the University of Washington and is the top legal consultant for real estate firms in the state. With no one else around in this section of the road, Draymond ran up to the car. Don't move, pussy. I ain't trying to hurt you. Just hand me your shit and we good. I don't have money on me, brother, but you can have the car. I see you in the forum, but I ain't here for that. Give the wallet, slow or night night, nigga. All right, all right, just just chill. Wyatt put the car in park. He then leaned over to the glove box. He cautiously retrieved his wallet and handed it over. Draymond carefully looked over its contents. Your name is Wyatt? Your mama must knew you was going to be somebody, he said jokingly. Hey, how you ain't got but $14? You living paycheck to paycheck? Driving the farm, but ain't got shit really. I should shoot your puss for for wasting my time. Oh, Don Cheeto looking ass nigga. You got my wallet. Just please let me go. I got a baby coming soon. My brother, please. This paused Draymond for a few seconds, thinking about his daughter. He thought about how she smiles when she sees him. He thought about her first steps. He remembered cooking for her the week before, which caused his stomach to rumble. I got a daughter, bruh. Fuck you mean, bruh. My baby mama fucking some nigga cause he sir wait and buy her shit. My people came from nothing and this system beat me down, bruh. I read about this shit in the pen. The television, the music, the schools, all this shit out here got me and my peoples jammed up, bruh. 
So what you know about that, fuck nigga? I hear you, my brother. But you can't lose hope. I bust my ass to get where I'm at. Before going to college, I lived by Forest Creek Apartments. I came from the bottom too, Wyatt said as he looked up at Draymond. That may be so, but your family cares. Your mama and daddy probably eat together and shit. Y'all got people who ain't all fucked up. You good, bruh. Okay, my struggle ain't the same as yours, but you ain't got to do this, brother. Look, nigga, if I had any other way, I wouldn't be here. I'd rather be laid up with Mona D at Forest Creek. Damn, you know Mona? With the big ass titties? Both men said in near unison. Shit, man, she still fucking everybody? Hell nah, ain't much change, said Wyatt. I see you got an ATM card. Bruh, all I need is about 300 to get me right. That's it, just $300. I'm jumping in the back with your wallet and you play driver, nigga. You're the boss. Draymond hopped into the seat behind Wyatt. No other cars drove by on this cool Tuesday night. When the light turned green, they headed toward the nearest plaza where a bank was located. Draymond instructed Wyatt to follow the speed limit. Give me the money, drop me back off, and I'm straight. I just need to get out of town. I thought you said you had a daughter. Why are you leaving her? If you must know, I got a job offer by the docks across the state. My cousin liked the foreman, but this nigga act like he can't pay to bring me out because he got seven kids. Seven kids. Yeah, and nobody got me but me. When they arrived at the ATM, Draymond decided to wait in the car after handing Wyatt the bank card. When he got halfway towards the machine, a police unit pulled up behind the vehicle. Two officers stepped out and stood behind Wyatt. Draymond sat worried as his heart raced. He didn't want a high-speed chase or to go back to prison. He prayed Wyatt didn't tip them off. All right, officers. Good night, sir. Wyatt re-entered the car and pulled away, driving up the road calmly. They returned to where they met and handed Draymond what he requested, plus $80 extra. Damn, bro, you ain't have to give me the few dollars more. It's good that you ain't turning a nigga in. I see you're not some common thief. You can't fake sincerity like that. Take it, brother. And when you get there, don't forget why you're there. Take care of your daughter. God works in crazy ways and you need it. Before handing back the wallet, Draymond took a picture of Wyatt's license with his cell phone after placing the gun in his waistband. What are you doing? If I wanted to turn you in, I would have done it back there. Nah, bruh, don't worry about it. I got you when I get right. Look, look at this like a loan. I'm not asking you to pay me back, though. Like I told you, I would rather be someplace else. Plus, you ain't snitch on a nigga. I ain't like savage. I'm just like trying to get it. The check will be in the mail. I promise you that. All right, man, whatever you say. I never thought I'd help a brother in this way. If you were in my field with this kind of persistence, I'd hire you. But I guess college wasn't in your plans. If more of us help more of us, Shit would be a little different. But until then, get it how you live, bruh. Live long and live right, my brother. In time, if enough of us wake up, things can be so much better. He ran through the bushes and leaped over a wall. Wyatt put his car in drive and went home, later explaining to his wife what transpired. Three months after that night, Wyatt got an express package from Seattle. 
Inside was a check for $400 and a $100 gift card. With the items, there was a letter which read, Thank you, my brother, with interest. Thank you for listening to my short story, The Robbery.